This is a crayfish. Um, crayfish are in the uh, phylum Arthropoda, and um, a couple of characteristics that are uh, typical of arthropods generally. Um, they do, of course, have the body segmentation, so the repeated body segments or metamers that we saw in um, other animals like the annelids last week. Um, they also display uh, the met metamerism, okay, so the, the repetition uh, of serially homologous segments. Segments. They also now display, um, unlike in most of the worms that we looked at, they also display now a fusion of segments into distinct body regions that are called tegmata, okay? So um, an animal like a crayfish, for example, has two tegmata. It has one region right here and it has another region down here, so two tegmata. And um, these form sort of discrete functional units. They form specific functions, and they are basically just uh, a fusion of those repeated metamers. Okay, so a new development that we see, uh, in addition to these uh, these tagma, is also that their appendages have joints. So we saw on things like the clam worm, um, little appendages on each of the body segments, little parapodia, but they didn't bend. So what's unique to the arthropods is that they have. Um, appendages that can bend, so there are joints, okay? That opens up a whole world of uh, flexibility, specialization, movement, um, so this, this is a pretty big deal in terms of um, evolutionary uh, development. So now we're going to focus on the fact that this is um, an arthropod in the subphylum crustacea, okay, so it is a crustacean that includes other things like um, lobsters and stuff like that. Um, Crustaceans are all um, aquatic, they live in the water, and they all breathe with gills, okay? So we will see those gills. They have two pairs of antennae, okay? So here's, here's the long ones are, are very obvious, and there's a second smaller pair in here. So they have uh, two pairs of antennae and two pairs of maxillae, which are, which are mouth parts, and we'll have a little look at those later, okay? So let's talk about the general um, body plan or the sections that we're seeing here. Um, these arthropods are covered by a very hard exoskeleton, okay, um, and it's it's basically a, cuti a cuticle that the epidermis um, underneath is secreting, okay, and it's made of something called chitin, and we've heard chitin before, um, things like the beak of the uh, squid were made of chitin, and uh, it's, it's, it's a tough, tough, uh, a tough material that is is often used for protection or for making um, structures that are used in things like locomotion and defense. Okay, so the cuticle has to be shed. This cuticle has to be shed or what we call molted. So as the animal grows and gets bigger, it actually has to shed this this cuticle, this skin. And we'll see some examples of of shed skins or shed exoskeletons later on in the lab. Okay, so as I mentioned, there are two tegmata, okay, two body regions. This one here, which basically contains um, sort of a head and a, and a central region here, this is called the cephalothorax, cephalothorax. The cephalothorax contains all the sensory structures, okay, so we're still seeing cephalization, and it also contains uh, the walking appendages and those that are responsible for handling food and, uh, and that sort of thing. So this is the cephalothorax, okay, and the other part down here is the abdomen. Okay, so we have cephalothorax and abdomen. Those are the two tagma on this animal. Now, if we flip it over, we'll have a little look at some of these appendages. And you'll note that there are quite a few pairs. There are, in fact, uh, one, two, three, four, five pairs of legs on this animal. Okay, so there's ten. We'll see how that differs later on from the insects. Um, these large ones up here, these sort of business end up here, these are called uh, chelipeds, okay? And you can see that they are highly modified. Um, they have these very large uh, pincers or claws up at the end, and these are great for handling or catching food, bringing objects to the mouth, um, good for self-defense, okay? And then we have uh, pairs of, of walking legs, basically these are all for locomotion all the way down. Um, underneath, 
we find these feathery little appendages. These are called swimmerets. Okay, swimmerets. And so these are used to uh, for a couple of functions. They are used a little bit in locomotion. Uh, they can be used to uh, circulate um, oxygen over eggs. Um, this is the area where a female would would hold her eggs. It forms sort of a brood chamber. Okay, so these are these are the swimmerets. Um, now speaking of male and female, I just wanted to point out these little sort of extra little swimmerets up right near sort of the, the um, proximal end of the abdomen, okay? You'll note that they're long and they're very feathery, they're very soft, okay? These are uh, modified swimmerets and um, in the female, this is a female and I know that because these are long and feathery, um, I will show you a male, uh, how about right about now, I'll bring out a male one so you can see that. So I found a male um, I'll just move these out of the way here. So we'll have a look at his copulatory swimmerets. There they are right here, the last pair of swimmerets before we get to the walking legs. And you should be able to see that they are quite different from those of the female. They're very hard, okay, um, and they're quite long. And those are used in uh, sperm transfer. So they actually use them to carry sperm and deposit it into the female. So let's have a look at the female again, see how that works. So we go back up here, here's her little um, soft, little feathery uh, swimmerets up here. And then further up the body, uh, now in the region of the cephalothorax, we find this opening right here, this little pore, okay? That's the seminal receptacle. So that's the entrance, uh, basically, that the, the male uh, uses to insert the, uh, the sperm using his copulatory swimmerets. So that's the, the female genital opening, basically. Um, there's another opening on females that you won't find on males, and you find them on either side of this middle pair, basically, of walking legs. There's a small one right here, a little opening, and another little pore right here, okay? That's the opening of the oviduct, okay? And now we've seen this over and over again. We know that um, eggs are created in ovaries, and they tend to travel down something like an oviduct, and then they, they pass somewhere where fertilization occurs. In this case, um, the eggs come out here, and um, they receive sperm from the um, from the seminal receptacle, so fertilization is external, okay? And then the female, as I mentioned, she uses these um, really quite long uh, swimmerets down here as basically a brood chamber. So this is where the eggs develop, okay? This is where the young develop is down in here, okay? So that is male and female, um, so now we'll get back to the internal anatomy. Okay, so now that we've seen the difference, um, I'll basically move, move on a little bit. So the very end of the uh, the tail, I suppose, or this um, this abdominal area contains a couple of different appendages here. Um, I'll first point out that there's a hole right here. That's the anus, okay, and then there's a central sort of fin right here, or a central lobe. All right, that's called the telson, okay, and then on either side here we have uh, uropods. Those are what these appendages here are called. So uropods, telson, and then we find the anus just above the telson. And I think that will do for now for the um, external anatomy. We will um, go ahead and open this up and see what we can find inside.